Rogers TV, New Brunswick. Are you a woman experiencing abuse? Do you know a woman experiencing abuse? Help is available any time of day or night. Sheltersafe.ca is an online map that helps you find a women's shelter or transition house that meets your needs so you can live a life free from violence. Sheltersafe.ca. Help is just a click away. I'm Craig Eagles. I have the honor to showcase New Brunswick's finest athletes and builders on Sports Inclusive. We take a look at their personal journey and how sports has impacted their lives. Sports Inclusive, only on Rogers TV. This is Rogers TV, Fredericton.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's update on COVID-19 in New Brunswick. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à cette mise à jour sur le COVID-19 au Nouveau-Brunswick. Speaking at this afternoon's briefing will be the following individuals. Dr. Jennifer Russell, Chief Medical Officer of Health. The Honorable Blaine Higgs, Premier of New Brunswick. Kevin Vickers, Leader of the Liberal Party. Chris Austin, Leader of the People's Alliance Party. And David Kuhn, Leader of the Green Party. Les personnes suivront prendre la parole lors de la séance d'information cet après-midi. Le Dr. Jennifer Russell, Médecin Hygiéniste en Chef. L'Honorable Blaine Higgs, Premier Ministre de Nouveau-Brunswick. Kevin Vickers, Chef de Parti de Libéral de Nouveau-Brunswick. Chris Austin, Chef de l'Alliance des gens de Nouveau-Brunswick. Et M. David Kuhn, Chef de Parti vert de Nouveau-Brunswick. Dr. Russell. Merci, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Good afternoon, everyone. Bon après-midi à vous tous. Welcome to the new normal. This news today that I have for you is the same as it was yesterday in that there are new, new, no new cases of COVID-19 in New Brunswick to report. And of the 118 cases confirmed to date, just 11 remain active. There are four New Brunswickers in hospital, including one in intensive care. And I again ask that you keep these people in your thoughts. The message that I have for you today is also the same as it was yesterday. Everyone must keep doing what you have been doing. Everyone must continue to practice physical distancing when you go, when you go out. And when it is not possible to keep a space of two meters between yourself and others, it is strongly recommended that you wear a non-medical mask, known as a community face mask, that covers your mouth and nose. Des 118 cas signalés jusqu'à présent, seuls 11 demeurent actifs. À l'heure actuelle, quatre personnes du Nouveau-Brunswick infectées par le COVID-19 sont hospitalisées, dont une aux soins intensifs. Je vous demande à nouveau de les garder dans vos pensées. Le message que je vous transmets aujourd'hui est aussi le même que celui d'hier. Vous devez tous continuer à faire ce que vous faites depuis le début. Vous devez tous continuer à respecter les consignes de distanciation sociale lorsque vous devez sortir. Lorsqu'il vous est impossible de maintenir une distance physique d'au moins deux mètres entre vous et les autres, il vous est fortement recommandé de porter un masque non médical ou un masque artisanal qui vous couvre le nez et la bouche. Everyone must continue to wash their hands frequently and thoroughly. Everyone must avoid touching their face to prevent the movement of droplets and secretions that harbor the virus. But some things are about to change. These directions to New Brunswickers, the original directions have not changed and will not change until the COVID-19 vaccine becomes widely available. We will continue to carefully monitor COVID-19 in the province, and this includes testing and contact tracing. New Brunswickers must continue to follow public health measures. Even as we begin to remove restrictions, New Brunswickers will be required to continue to practice physical distancing and good hand hygiene. And I will not hesitate to recommend the reimposition of the restrictions being loosened today if the outbreak worsens. Any significant acceleration of the disease curve will trigger a new round of restrictions to public movement and activity. Les citoyens du Nouveau-Brunswick doivent continuer à respecter les mesures de la santé publique. Même si nous com commençons à assouplir à certaines restrictions, les citoyens du Nouveau-Brunswick doivent continuer à respecter les consignes de distanciation physique et à avoir de bonnes habitudes d'hygiène. Je n'hésiterai pas de recommander la remise en place des restrictions que vous assouplissons aujourd'hui si l'éclosion s'aggrave. Toute accélération importante de courbe de la maladie entraînera une nouvelle ronde de restrictions sur les déplacements et les activités du public. Si nous prenons connaissance de trois éclosions de COVID-19 qui ne sont pas interliées au cours d'une période de six jours ou de calier un rassemblement de masse pour lequel il est impossible d'effectuer un suivi complet, nous remettrons immédiatement en place les restrictions en vigueur d'aujourd'hui. These restrictions may be imposed locally, regionally, or province-wide as circumstances dictate. If we see three outbreaks of COVID-19 not related to one another in a six-day period or cases linked to a mass gathering that cannot be fully traced, we will immediately move back to the restrictions that are in place today. New Brunswickers have done an amazing job in flattening the curve of this outbreak. My gratitude to each and every one of you is beyond words. Now our task is to keep that curve flat. 
We at Public Health will do our part with continued testing and contact tracing as new cases emerge. Our testing strategy will continue to prioritize those in our society who are at greatest risk as well as those who are working to protect them. We will ensure there is sufficient testing of the population to maintain our confidence that our results are correct. Les responsables de la santé publique continueront à faire leur part en poursuivant les tests de dépistage et la recherche des contacts si de nouveaux cas sont signalés. Notre stratégie en matière de tests de dépistage continuera de mettre en priorité les personnes qui sont le plus à risque, ainsi que celles qui travaillent en vue de les protéger. Nous veillerons à ce qu'un nombre suffisant de tests sont effectués au sein de la population pour maintenir notre confiance à l'égard de l'extraditude de nos résultats. But so much of what happens in the next few weeks and months is in your hands. We want to hear from employers on how they can safely resume operations in their workplaces so that the virus does not spread. Where ingenuity and innovation can be brought to bear, we may be able to allow more New Brunswickers to safely return to their regular jobs in the weeks and months ahead. And obviously we will be providing some guidance around what that looks like, but again, we would like to engage in conversations about this guidance. Our collective actions will have no effect if they are not matched by thousands of individual actions. And I implore you, as you go about the activities that will now be available to you, to maintain that two meters of physical distancing, the distance that the virus cannot cross. Again, in circumstances where physical distancing is difficult, I strongly recommend that you wear a community face mask. There will be cases where businesses will require that customers wear a mask as a condition of entering their premises and other organizations as well. I support this and any other measures that businesses and organizations decide to take to reduce the potential for further spread of the virus. The impulse to shake hands after a friendly game of golf will be strong. Remind yourself to resist it. Remember the importance of washing your hands, not touching your face, and cleaning frequently handled surfaces such as doorknobs and countertops. These measures will save lives. We have come so far and we have done so well. Let's continue to take pride in what we have achieved by maintaining the course that we have set. L'impulsion de vous serrer la main après une ronde amicale de golf sera forte. N'oubliez pas de résister à la tentation. N'oubliez pas l'importance de vous laver les mains, de ne pas vous toucher la visa le visage et de nettoyer les surfaces fréquemment touchées comme les poignées de porte et les comptoirs. Ces, me ces mesures permettront de sauver des vies. Nous avons fait d'énormes progrès et nous avons si bien réussi jusqu'à présent. Continuons d'être fiers de ce que nous avons accompli Et maintenant, le cas. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Bonjour. Today we wear red ribbons, honoring the lives lost this past weekend in Nova Scotia. Our hearts are with the people of our neighboring province as they grieve, not just today, but in the days to come. Our thoughts and prayers continue to be with all of Nova Scotians at this very difficult time. Today is an important day for our province. I must begin by thanking the other leaders, Dr. Russell and her team, the Minister of Health and his team, our Minister of Public Safety and their team, and all of the thousands of frontline workers that are making today possible. It's indeed been a team effort. To date, together, we have been able to manage a very difficult situation. Le fait que nous n'avons encore une fois Aucun nouveau cas aujourd'hui est source d'optimisme pour don. Je dois dire que notre succès, jusqu'à maintenant, peut être largement attribué à la capacité de la groupe de maître de politique partisan de côté et de corder la priorité au Nouveau-Brunswick. Every person in this province is focused on the same goal. Whether you work in health, the Department of Public Safety, frontline services, or at home doing your part by social distancing, you have made this a success story thus far. It is understandable that New Brunswickers are getting increasingly anxious to return to some sense of normalcy. Il est important de retrouver à notre province, mais il est tout aussi important de le faire d'une manière qui assure la santé et la sécurité et toutes les provinces. Over the next several weeks, in months, we will gradually be lifting restrictions, while at the same time complying with public health policy. To be successful, 
we will define our new normal in four phases. At each phase, public health will monitor what is happening closely. We expect new cases will result. La santé publique a identifié des déclencheurs qui vont déterminer le déroulement des différentes phases. Nous devons assurer de manière responsable de notre approche et faire la transition d'une étape à l'autre seulement lorsque nous sommes prêts. The phases will be guided by four distinct public health alert levels. We are currently in the red phase. This phase is aimed at flattening the curve and containing the virus as quickly as possible. The second phase is orange. The goal of this phase is to balance the reopening of social and economic settings while preventing a major resurgence of transmission. The third phase is yellow. During this phase, we will further increase reopening of social and economic settings if we have demonstrated the ability to control transmission of the virus. The fourth and final phase is green, and it will likely only come after a vaccine is available, or we learn more about how to, how to control and protect people from the virus. Vous devrez comprendre que nous devrons passer d'une étape à l'autre lentement et de manière graduelle. Je ne la dira jamais assez. As I said, we are currently in the red phase, but thanks to your hard work, we are ready to take on our first steps into the orange phase. Effective immediately, households may now choose to spend time with one, another, with, with one other household, assuming, of course, both households agree. The selection is not interchangeable. Les ressemblements sont encore interdits. Les espaces extérieurs à faible risque peuvent être rouverts. Cela inclut les terrains de golf et les terrains d'entraînement, si tout le majeur de sécurité et de distanciation physique sont en place. The delay to the spring hunting and recreational fishing seasons have been lifted. With proper physical distancing, people can now enjoy outdoor spaces, including parks and beaches. And while ATV trails are for this phase still closed, I expect people will indeed go for a ride on their own trails. The concern is only about gatherings, and that's why at this time the trails are officially closed. But I look forward to delivering the good news in the future that trails are once again open. Co-workers or neighbors can carpool as long as guidelines from public health are maintained, which means there should only be two people in the vehicle with a passenger in the back seat. Post-secondary students requiring access to campus can fulfill course requirements if they are able to do so in a safe manner. As an alternative to online worship, religious organizations can hold outdoor services if parishioners can stay in their vehicles at all times and the vehicles are spaced two meters apart. These are first steps. Vous devrez continuer à suivre la directive de la santé publique, même si nous commencerons lentement à rouvrir notre province. La vie n'est pas normale, et il ne faut pas retourner à la normale bientôt. You will need to continue to practice social distancing and hand washing. When physical distancing isn't possible, wearing a mask may indeed be required. This is how we will keep New Brunswickers safe and healthy. We aren't yet ready to open large sectors immediately. Large gatherings such as festivals and concerts will not be allowed until after December 31st, though this is a subject that will be reviewed depending on circumstances. Nous devrons être prudents et nous devrons être vigilants. Nous ne pouvons pas nous permettre de baser le garde maintenant. I look forward to making an announcement in the future when we can open more. Under our current projections, we could move into the next phase of orange in two to four weeks. We must protect the health and safety of all New Brunswickers first and foremost as we move forward. I realize that there will be questions about when and why not this business, and I would like to give all of you those answers. But the truth is, 
We still don't know, and it depends on you. It depends on your organization. It depends on your ability to follow the rules of public health. It's important to understand, as companies present procedures and protocols that comply with public health, these times that we've laid out could indeed vary. C'est le comportement de chacun d'entre vous qui va déterminer la suite. Vous devez continuer à suivre les mesures de la santé publique pour contenir la COVID-19 et arrêter la propagation. And we know more, and when we know more, we will share it with you. I can assure you that any answers we are able to give you will be based on science, on data, and the latest information available on the spread of the virus. It may feel daunting when we talk about the weeks and months ahead. I understand that, but I encourage you to look at what we have already done and achieved together. You followed the directives of public health and you have gotten us yes, this far to this point. New Brunswick has so far fared better than most jurisdictions in North America. Nous pouvons prendre ces premières mesures grâce à vous. Les gens de New Brunswick continue à faire preuve de résilience et de compassion à la regard des autres. We will overcome this challenge as we have overcome every challenge we have faced during this trying time. This is not about timelines, it's about a process. I believe when this process is done, New Brunswick will indeed be stronger and more resilient than it ever has been. Thank you. Merci. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour, tout le monde. J'aimerais remercier tous les New Brunswickois et New Brunswickoises pour votre beau travail et collaboration en ce qui concerne la bataille contre le virus COVID-19. Aussi, encore une fois, j'aimerais remercier tous nos médecins, tous nos infirmiers et infirmières, toutes les équipes de soutien et bien sûr notre premier répondant. Vous êtes nos héros. Nous sommes tellement fiers de vous autres d'avoir nous protégés, de nous avoir protégés. My fellow citizens, I just wanted to say thank you for your great work and collaboration with public health and Dr. Russell and her team in keeping all of us safe. I'm very proud of each and every one of you. I want to thank once again our doctors and nurses, our support care workers and our cleaners, our premier re responders and our public service as well. You are our heroes. You've kept us safe and we are indeed owing you a great deal of gratitude. Moi, je suis convaincu que nous allons réussir à gagner cette bataille. I am convinced. Ensemble, together, ensemble, together, we will overcome this virus and New Brunswick will always show itself at the essence of what it is all about. Great people. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Um, I want to begin by stressing the fact that uh, we're leading the nation in terms of our per capita cases uh, here in New Brunswick. That's something we should all be proud of. Um, and not just in Canada, but I think if you look across North America, uh, we're, we're certainly ahead of the pack uh, across North America. That, that is incredible. Uh, I think it's based on the fact that uh, the, the Premier um, opened this up, this Cabinet Committee up to four party leaders to get four different viewpoints in the meetings and um, and I think the fact that uh, government moved quick um, to to lock things down I know it was hard it was rigid but now we're seeing the success of that um, you know in, in New Brunswick there's there's two extreme versions to to what we should do there's the extreme version that says we should stay in indefinite lockdown and then there's the other extreme version which says everything should just open up instantly and neither one of those are, are beneficial to the future of New Brunswick so I think what we've accomplished here as a committee, and uh, very proud to be part of it, 
um, is, is a, a comprehensive approach, uh, phased in approach where, uh, you know, we can open things up over time and, uh, you know, check the stats, check the data and make sure that data is, is available to the public so that you know uh, what's going on in the province of New Brunswick. So I just want to reiterate uh, how proud I am to be part of, of this uh, cabinet committee in helping make the decisions to shape New Brunswick. I want to again thank the Premier for opening this up to, uh, to all of us as party leaders and uh, how proud I am of, of uh, fellow New Brunswickers that took this serious and are following the guidelines set forward by, uh, by government. And to the essential workers, you know, over the last uh, six weeks, uh, government's been telling people to stay home, uh, but those of you that work in healthcare, those of you that, uh, you know, work in seniors' homes, uh, uh, nursing homes, grocery stores, uh, etc., cetera, uh, you folks have kept this province uh, going. Um, despite, uh, you know, the, the unknown and the fear that you faced and, and the anxiety which is understood. And I just want to say I really appreciate that. I know all New Brunswickers appreciate that. And I'm convinced we're going to get through this better and stronger. And uh, I'm just proud of what we're able to accomplish as a province. Thank you. Bon après-midi. Je veux dire que merci à notre médecin hygiéniste en chef, Madame Dr. Rousseau. Uh, merci beaucoup, uh, Dr. Rassol, et aussi uh, M. Uh, Higgs, le Premier ministre de Nouveau-Brunswick, pour son leadership. Uh, merci, M. Higgs. Um, mais je veux dire um, merci à vous. Je suis très, très fier de vous, uh, chacun, chacun et chacune, pour votre engagement, pour votre courage, pour votre patience. Je suis tellement, uniquement, très fier au Nouveau-Brunswick Uh, de vous, de, 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 de la jeunesse, des années, des parents, des enfants, des travailleurs et travailleuses. Mais uh, c'est uh, important de comprendre que ça, c'est juste le fin de la première chapitre de notre uh, histoire dans, cette, uh, uh, dans la lutte, dans nos, notre lutte contre la COVID-19. Uh, nous allons écrire, uh, écrire une uh, un euh, deuxième chapitre et, et des autres chapitres. Donc, c'est très important de comprendre ça. Euh, nous dépendons euh, les, euh, les uns des autres. Euh, et euh, ça, c'est euh, la, la nature de, de l'Union Brunswickoise. Nous travaillons ensemble au Nouveau-Brunswick, en Acadie, dans, la, dans le pays des Autochtones. Merci. Et aujourd'hui, Aujourd'hui, le déconfinement commence, finalement. Good afternoon, everybody. I just want to say thank you to the um, Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Russell, for her leadership, to the Premier, um, Blaine Higgs, for his leadership, uh, leading us through this uh, first part of the crisis. Uh, it is incredible what you all have done. I am so proud of everyone, of the youth, of the children, of the parents, of our seniors, of our uh, frontline workers and all of our workers for uh, the kind of commitment you've shown, the kind of courage you've shown, and the patience you've shown in working together to protect each other from uh, COVID-19, to protect our health, our security, and our safety. And uh, where we are today has a lot to do with what we collectively have achieved. But it really is the first chapter of this story we're writing together in New Brunswick in our fight against COVID-19. And it's important to remember that. And we will be writing the second chapter starting today because today is the beginning of, uh, of our ability to re-enter society in a careful and measured way. So thank you all. Um, continue to be careful, to prends uh, prudence, fait attention, and uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Merci, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you, Mr. Austin. Merci, Mr. Austin. Thank you, Mr. Vickers. Merci, Mr. Vickers. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Premier ministre. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Dr. Russell. Merci beaucoup. We will now proceed with questions from the media. Each reporter will have one question, and you have the right to pose your question in the language of your choice. Nous allons maintenant procéder aux questions des journalistes. Vous avez toujours le droit de poser vos questions dans la langue de votre choix. Chaque journaliste peut poser une question. Michel Corvo, Radio-Canada. 
Oui, bonjour. Merci, Bruce. J'aimerais que vous nous décriviez, pour le bénéfice de nos auditeurs et de tout le monde, ce que c'est deux unités familiales, c'est-à-dire qui pourra être ensemble sans restriction. Dr. Russell. Bonjour, Michel. Euh, C'est-à-dire, ce n'est pas nécessairement deux familles, mais ça peut être deux maisons. Alors, les gens qui demeurent dans deux maisons peuvent euh, être ensemble euh, sans avoir la distanciation euh, de deux mètres entre eux. Alors, c'est vraiment le, les, les contacts proches comme dans votre maison avec votre famille, mais avec deux familles. Mais il faut que ça soit seulement une autre famille, seulement les gens qui demeurent dans une autre maison. Alors, c'est juste deux maisons ou deux domiciles euh, qui peuvent combiner ensemble. Il faut qu'ils choisissent eux l'un à l'autre. Alors, vous ne pouvez pas choisir plus qu'une famille ou une domicile. Il faut que ça soit seulement une. Merci, Dr. Russell. Elizabeth Fraser, CTV. À uh, CBC, sorry. Thanks. Um, my question is for Dr. Russell. Can you go into more detail about the large-scale monitoring and testing that will be required, including the technology apps that you will be using? So as we have moved through the pandemic, at this point in time, uh, our case criteria, case definitions have changed. Therefore, our testing criteria have changed and evolved. And as we have progressed, uh, we are now at the point where we're at two out of five symptoms for the population to be tested. But in addition to that, uh, going in the longer term, that will continue and perhaps even uh, have only one symptom out of the five. But we're also testing, uh, we're continuing our sentinel testing in emergency departments as well as in hospitals. We are also going to make sure that we have a, we actually have put in place recently a, a rapid response team. So when we do know of, uh, of a vulnerable population or an institutional setting that needs to be tested very, very quickly, we have the capability to be able to do that in very quick order and have those test results back very, very quickly. So prioritizing healthcare workers, prioritizing people who work in healthcare facilities and nursing homes, et cetera, and vulnerable populations, that will be part of our approach moving forward and then eventually in the longer term as supplies are available and as the technology is available we would move into testing on, on, a, on a larger scale and also eventually when uh, serum testing is available to test for antibodies and for people who may have already had the disease. Thank you. Vicki Hogarth, Charlotte County TV. Russell, I've spoken to many people in rural New Brunswick who've avoided testing due to travel requirements, but I understand that Horizon Health has made mobile testing teams available now. How does that work, and is it available to everyone in all corners of the province? Dr. Russell? Is my mic on? Is it? Is it on now? Okay. So uh, the rural, if I would hope that everyone in the province feels comfortable getting tested, and I know that most of the testing uh, locations, if there is a need for transportation, uh, sometimes that is provided, but also. Um, uh, the extramural program is also helping us with our testing. So those are two avenues that can help people who don't feel that they have great access and great transportation to our uh, multiple testing sites. Isabella Rose, Radio Canada. Oui, ma question est pour le Premier ministre. Euh, ça, ne, ça ne concerne pas le déconfinement. C'est plutôt une question concernant la communauté autochtone de l'Estigouche au Québec qui dispose maintenant de 10 laissés passer pour se rendre dans les magasins de Campbellton et à Tolville, au Nouveau-Brunswick, une mesure qui semble seulement offerte aux, aux Autochtones, si on en croit aux, les maires des communautés environnantes. Alors, pouvez-vous m'expliquer pourquoi le Nouveau-Brunswick a donné euh, ces laissés passer euh, aux Autochtones de l'Istigouche? Actually, this initiative was taken on by, by the, the uh, Listigwe community, so um, I commend them for their efforts in that regard. We did work with them at their request to help fill in uh, some of the uh, questions to be asked, but this is something that um, they took in their community as an initiative, and we've seen others do that to, to protect their community, so 
Um, we just supported that. We did not prescribe it. So uh, I, I certainly commend them for it. Merci, thank you. Laura Brown, CTV. <clears throat> Hi, Premier. I'm not asking this because of my background, but I'm wondering if you have ever had any conversations with um, Prince Edward Island and where they're at right now about potentially opening up that border, only that border. And at this point, are all other borders, including the U.S., remaining closed until further notice? Uh, yes, I have actually talked to uh, Premier King, um, and we've both shared, um, you know, our, our respective kind of um, status at this point, and also what what pending things we might open together. Um, could our borders uh, continue if our continued uh, situation exists and is comparable? Could they be shared uh, and open collectively at some point along the way? I think so. Uh, could it be treated differently than what we see in other neighboring provinces, um, given the circumstances? Uh, yes, it could. So those discussions are ongoing, but certainly at this point in time, our border will remain uh, and the surveillance will remain as, as it is. Thank you. Just before we uh, proceed, I'd just like to make it uh, clear that you can pose your question to any of the uh, podium guests who did speak earlier. Vous avez toujours le droit de poser vos questions à un des membres qui a déjà parlé au micro. We will now go to Matthew Roy-Como. Monsieur Matthew Roy-Como, l'Acadie Nouvelle. Bonjour. Uh, je pense que ma question est pour le Premier ministre Higgs. J'aimerais savoir qu'est-ce qui va se passer dans les prochains jours avec les garderies, sachant que certaines entreprises vont reprendre lentement leurs activités et qu'il va y avoir des besoins pour plus de place en garderie. Uh, yes, there indeed will be needs, and we have already contacted uh, many of the daycare owners. I think the, there's uh, currently over 800 in the province, and we've had the responses from over half of them now that they are, are willing and able to uh, get back in business. And uh, we recognize that the two have to be um, simultaneous in terms of having daycare spaces available, meeting the public health requirements, as we encourage people and provide opportunities for them to return to the labor force um, and open their businesses. So the, uh, the two will go hand in hand, and uh, we are indeed um, dealing with that appropriately. Merci, Monsieur Roy-Comont. Merci, Monsieur Premier Ministre. Andrew Waugh, Telegraph Journal. Hello. Um, my question is actually to all four political leaders, um, and it's specifically about phase four. Premier, you said that these would likely not resume until there was a vaccine, which is 12 to 18 months away. So we're talking about no organized sports, no mass gatherings, and no one going to bars for the next year to a year and a half at least. How do you and the other political leaders expect the people that run these businesses and have these festivals and run these sports leagues to make it to the other side? A very appropriate uh, question, and it wasn't one that we took lightly in, in terms of how do we make that work. But I think understanding right today, with the knowledge we have today of the virus and how it spreads, it would not be appropriate for us to suggest that we were in a position to do anything other than to prevent mass gatherings and to ensure that uh, we didn't have a huge breakout in, in, our, in our community and in our province. Does that mean that we don't learn more as we go down the road? So right now, uh, uh, my knowledge would be we're a year to a year and a half, to your point, uh, away from a vaccine. But if we learn other protective measures, if we're able to, you know, meet the public health requirements as, as, as maybe they will evolve and change as well as we learn more, have different equipment, have different sporting events or events that can meet the requirements, you know, maybe that, can, that, can, uh, that timeline can shrink. But right now, uh, knowing what we know, and as we put forward at the end of this season to plan any mass gathering um, this year was certainly not in the cards, and I, I mentioned that directly in my address. Uh, but going forward, let's hope that innovation takes over and, and things will look differently in the uh, next year at this time. But at this stage, we're basing on the decisions on the facts we have. Mr. Vickers. Andrew, a great question. Um, one of the things that really has struck me, not only the collaboration between the political leaders here at the table, but uh, how incredibly well we're served by Dr. Russell and her team and the public service in general. And 
I can tell you that uh, we listened to Dr. Russell, we listened to public safety uh, to the letter, and uh, to echo on the Premier's words, uh, innovation. I'm optimistic uh, as things go forward that uh, perhaps in small ways, some of the things that we would like to do, we'll certainly be able to do it. So um, I, again, just want to reiterate that I, I think uh, with a little innovation and uh, let's hope with some good luck, uh, we'll be able to do some of those things of which you questioned. Mr. Austin. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Um, it's, it's certainly um, um, a difficult position, I think, um, to have the, that these businesses are in, especially the businesses. And of course, you look at sports and recreation, that, that is a big issue. There's no question. And I guess my take from this, uh, being part of the meetings and the discussions, is this is a target. This, this phase and approach, it's a, a blueprint that we um, can have some understanding of how and when we're going to be able to open things up. But as you know, and as everybody watching knows, this, uh, coronavirus is a, is a new virus. And there's new information coming out all the time which may change the way we do things as a province and as a committee we, we make our decisions. Um, you know, you can look, uh, there's recently a study out of uh, New York that showed, uh, you know, potentially 2.7 people having uh, been contacted with COVID-19 through an antibody testing. So that's new information that's coming out. And all the time, uh, there's going to be new information that, again, may chart a different course for us. But right now, this is the best plan uh, based on the information that we've had. And um, I'm confident it can work. And, and again, based on information that comes forward, some of it may change from time to time. Thank you, Mr. Austin. Mr. Kuhn? are some businesses and some uh, occupations, vocations, that are going to be particularly um, hard hit over time and will need continued support. So we've got to ensure that the supports are in place for both our most vulnerable and those most affected, uh, whether it's musicians and uh, venue owners uh, that put on concerts uh, or uh, athletes and, uh, and, uh, and athletic sta uh, stadiums or um, uh, conference centers and those who are on conference centers, that they, um, there are those, there are those uh, businesses and those pastimes that uh, depend on large gatherings of people tightly packed together. And with this virus, um, it doesn't permit that. And so we need to figure out um, how to do things differently. Uh, to ensure that people can pursue their vocations um, to the best degree possible when they're largely dependent on those kinds of large, tightly packed uh, groupings of people. And that's going to be our challenge. Um, it doesn't mean uh, that there's not going to be any music. Of course there's going to be music. It doesn't mean there's not going to be any sports. We're going to figure out, I'm sure, uh, how there will be some kinds of sports uh, that can be done safely. Um, but it does mean uh, we have to be conscious that the virus remains in our environment. Um, it's like it's like being chased into a into your house by a rabid bear, you know. And uh, you got to leave to get food. You got to leave to get water. Uh, but you know the bear is out there, and uh, the bear is particularly good. This one is particularly good at camouflaging itself uh, in the form of asympt asymptomatic uh, people who are carrying the virus. So, so. Um, this only makes sense. But we will learn more as we go along. Um, this is, um, un these are uncharted waters and this is a voyage we are all on together. And uh, it's our responsibility and certainly uh, my commitment uh, to everyone to uh, take care of each other and, and make sure we, we uh, come out the other end uh, whole. Thank you everyone. Thank you Andrew Waugh. Silas Brown, Global News. Hi, Dr. Russell. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of people today who are going to be very, very excited uh, by what they're going to be able to do, particularly, you know, being able to see, potentially see some loved ones again and, uh, and be able to hug them. But uh, how, I guess what I want to know is how likely is it that at some point over the next, you know, several months that we're going to have to kind of go backwards and see things come back into force. Uh, how prepared should people be for that possibility? I think the more careful people are, uh, 
the more careful people are, the less likely that will be to happen. Is it possible? Is it predictable? Is it a likelihood? I think it is a likelihood. It is a possibility. But again, the degree to which we all do our part and all try to follow um, the public health measures as they roll out, I think that will be what dictates our success. And as Mr. Kuhn said, you know, we have to live with this virus. We know it's going to be with us. Uh, we can't stamp it out completely. We, we know that. And so that's why we are prepared over the next 18 to 24 months to learn how to live with it in the safest way possible, to avoid resurgences as much as possible. Will we be 100% successful? Again, it depends on how you define success. If you define success as having an entire province or an entire nation um, be able to change culturally and behaviorally how they conduct themselves in society and as a, a, and within the economy, then again that will be the success. But I and I also agree with Mr. Kuhn around protecting vulnerable populations, as we have had in our COVID-19 meetings, many discussions around uh, around vulnerable populations and how best to protect them. Because as some of us are able to do more in society, those vulnerable populations will continue to need to be protected. And so I think I think we can be cautiously optimistic. But again, if everybody does their part and everybody understands the risks to each other, uh, whether you're young or old or have uh, multiple medical problems, uh, all of these things need to be taken into account as we proceed very carefully. And again, I feel like all the information that uh, Premier Higgs and I have been providing to the public on a regular basis, all the work that the civil servants have done, again, to make sure that that information is available to everyone to be empowered with this information and this knowledge to take the safest measures possible as we proceed as a province. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Keith Doucette, Canadian Press. Keith Doucette, Canadian Press. Hadil Ibrahim, CBC. Thank you. This is a question for Dr. Russell. Uh, so in the plan, people can expand their family unit to, to add another. Uh, if those people don't have the same name and aren't related but agree to add each other to their unit, how can they be protected from enforcement and uh, how big can this unit be? Well, it's about two households, so two separate addresses, two dom like two two different households, whether it's a house or an apartment or what have you. So if somebody were to make a phone call and say, is this the family unit that you've chosen or the, or the, the people that you've chosen to be as part of your bubble, uh, to be able to confirm that you have each chosen each other uh, as confirmation, that's the way to keep things as safe as possible because it's around limiting your close contacts. Again, and it's about trying to reduce the transmission. If somebody in that unit was to be affected, um, that there would be just the fewest number possible. But again, releasing measures slightly to allow people to function uh, a, a, with a bit more normalcy than, than we have been thus far since the, the measure, Emergency Measures Act has been put into place. So it's a balancing of those risks. Thank you. John Chilebeck, Daily Gleaner. Hi, it's a message for the Premier. Um, the New Brunswick College of Pharmacists says the government's decision to overrule its limit on prescription drug purchases is unprecedented in Canada, raises legal questions, and could cause drug shortages. Can you explain the legal authority for overruling the college, and will the college be included on the new working group that's going to start uh, making such decisions? And after you're done answering, Premier, I'd like to hear Dr. Russell's professional opinion on the government's decision and from all the leaders on the podium. Firstly, the uh, yes, it will be um, part of the group to determine the, the supply criteria. Uh, secondly, we have asked for, I know the Minister of Health worked directly with, uh, with the college and other pharmacists, uh, looking at um, not only how the group is formatted, but also in relation to, to understanding which drugs have a supply concern and which ones do not. Uh, we have asked for that information to be provided, 
and uh, because we were saying we just want to make a decision based on the facts. And um, in light of that information not being available, it's uh, all right, well, we, we want to ensure that people can afford, continue to pay for the drugs. We also don't want the people to be coming and going more than necessary in the, into the, uh, into the let's say in this case, out in, into the pharmacies. But, but the point is that all we have said is let's, let's ensure that the drugs that we are limiting are, are actually drugs that uh, there is a shortage. And at this point in time, that information has not been readily available, and as such, um, we found it necessary to protect uh, the citizens. And, and I, I said this yesterday, and I, I'll say it again. This isn't about the local pharmacists. This isn't about the local pharmacies. Um, this was a, a directive that came from the College of Pharmacists. Um, and, and so I, I feel that it's important to distinguish because I know that the, the local pharmacies and their employees are, are kind of bearing the brunt of the, of the public uh, wrath, I, I guess I would say, in, in the sense of, of the situation. But it is about having both. You know, this is a situation where we can have both. We can have, we can have assurances that we protect the supply of drugs that indeed are in short supply, and at this point we're, we're not aware of any. Um, and we can ensure that our, our citizens, especially you know those uh, in, in a vulnerable situation that are trying to make a choice possibly between drugs and, and between other options uh, for them in terms of their monthly uh, money available, is that we, we, we capture the best of both worlds. And I think this has done just that. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Mr. Chilbeck. Inder Initiar Huddle today. Hi, uh, Premier. Hi, Dr. Russell. Uh, this question is about um, the bars, the differences between bars and restaurants. I'm wondering what are the uh, consideration? Why are the considerations different for restaurants and bars in terms of when they can reopen? Assessment around um, how how closely. Uh, people mingle in, in a bar type situation. People are standing up and they're in closer contact. In a restaurant situation, they're sitting down and there's not the same mingling in terms of so being able to social distance. So that's what separates a restaurant from a bar. And uh, obviously there are some restaurants that have bars in them, but obviously with, with the public health measures that we will want to keep in place, it is all about maintaining social distancing and um, the capability of a business or an organization to be able to um, imp maintain that. Thank you. Adam Hiras, Telegraph Journal. Uh, thanks, Bruce. Um, question for the Premier. Uh, I just went through the federal technical briefing on the new federal provincial rent subsidy program for small businesses. Uh, I'm told that New Brunswick has signed on to the plan and will pick up part of the price tag. I just wanted to know what changed, Premier. You, you appeared yesterday concerned the plan may over, overlap with others that you've already put in place. And I just wanted to know how much of the 75% subsidy New Brunswick will pay. So we, uh, yes, and it, it was a concern to understand, uh, firstly, what the details were around this plan so that um, we, we weren't overlapping with other programs. As uh, I had indicated before, you know, we, had, we have other programs that were interest-free loans for different size businesses. We did the, the 900 a, a month in, in terms of, or for the two-week period for the gap on the unemployment uh, protection that the feds uh, had rolled out. And we were looking and working with every business. So my concern was not to get, you know, boxed into any particular category because Many businesses have different situations. In the case of the the um, the rent um, subsidy, it was a situation the federal government. We didn't have the details. They uh, yesterday came to us and said, you know, they they wanted to develop the timelines around uh, whether we were participating or not. And um, and of course, it, it's a program that we had heard from many businesses that it was very much a concern to them. So it was a it was a case of making a decision that. It seems to be very relevant in the business community. There seems to be a need in the business community. And we'll continue to evaluate each business to ensure that the right measures go in the right place. But this is one of them that we will participate in. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Um, I was a little trigger happy, folks, and I apologize. Uh, John Chilbeck's question was addressed to Dr. Russell and all the leaders about the pharmacy. So Mr. Vickers, if you would like to have a chance to respond, followed by Mr. Austin, Mr. Kuhn, then Dr. Russell. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chilliback, I think it's a very uh, uh, good question that you've uh, raised and obviously something of, of uh, significance and of concern to everyone. 
Um, I know uh, in asking questions uh, myself in regards to this issue, um, I, my, I as well had concerns, but uh, uh, in my discussions uh, with Minister Fleming, uh, I've been assured that at any time uh, there ever appears to be a situation where there is a, a shortage, uh, we can sit back and uh, readdress the readdress the, uh, the the issue. So I believe that uh, going forward, uh, it's one that we'll have to very be very vigilant, very uh, perspective on. But I'm confident that uh, should in fact there be a, a critical shortage of, of whatever that we'll have enough lead time to uh, take the appropriate action necessary. Uh, thank you, John. I, I kind of look at it this way. Um, you know, when you go into a grocery store and there's a shortage of uh, toilet paper, you may be limited to how many items of toilet paper you can buy. But that doesn't mean everything in the toilet, or excuse me, in the grocery store is, is limited. And I kind of look at, you know, um, prescription drugs the same way. And if, if there's certain items that um, the organization can, can point to that says, look, these particular items are going to be in supply and some evidence behind that, I would certainly uh, support a 30-day um, order on that. But again, um, just because certain drugs may have a shortage, doesn't mean that all drugs should have a shortage. And, and as the Premier said, I mean, you're talking about people coming in and out of the stores, uh, pharmacies, um, instead of coming in once every 90 days, are coming in once every 30 days, and, and not to mention the included um, cost associated with that for clients. So um, I, think, I think we've made the right move here. Um, but again, it, it is determined on what shortages there are, and let's pinpoint those shortages to make sure that uh, that, that issue is dealt with. Hi, John. It's, um, it's something that both uh, myself and my caucus colleagues have uh, heard regularly from our constituents on, where people have 11, 12, 13 prescriptions uh, among a couple, and uh, for many uh, seniors it, was, it had become quite a financial burden. Um, so I can understand why the college initially uh, put this uh, limit in place, but we're at the point now where, uh, and th th this was clearly an unintended consequences in terms of the financial hardship that it would cause, but clearly it is causing that. Clearly there aren't shortages uh, of supply, and so uh, I was pleased when the Minister of Health uh, made the decision after discussions with all those concerned uh, to, uh, to issue the order to lift this restriction on, uh, on uh, prescriptions for 60 or 90 days. So it's going to make a big difference for significant numbers of New Brunswickers who uh, were facing financial hardship with this uh, regime. Dr. Russell. Hi, John. Um, I have been aware of these discussions, but I have not really been directly involved in this issue. So um, while I can appreciate there are different issues at hand to consider, I, again, I haven't been really directly involved in, in this particular one, so I don't really feel like it's fair to comment. Thank you, Dr. Russell. Thank you, Premier. Merci, Monsieur Premier Ministre. Thank you, Mr. Vickers. Merci, Monsieur Vickers. Thank you, Mr. Austin. Merci, Monsieur Austin. Merci, Monsieur Kuhn. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Merci, Dr. Russell. Thank you, Dr. Russell. That concludes today's update. Thank you. Cela conclut la séance d'aujourd'hui. Merci beaucoup.